In large environments, we have the challenge of providing everybody inside of our environment with quick access to internet resources or other resources that might be located on the network. If you have 10 people going out to the internet, you may be able to handle that amount of throughput. If there are 100 users that need to access resources on the internet, that might be a little bit more of a challenge. And that's where we start to implement things like caches. Caches are middlemen that will send out the request for you. And when they receive the response, it will store the response locally on a local server. So your first user has normal access to some information or resource on the internet. The second user doesn't have to go out to the internet to get that information. The first user has already done that. So your local cache simply responds back with exactly the same information that your first user got, and the third user, and the fourth, and the fifth, so that you can scale up and have a lot less bandwidth use out to the internet. This is something we often see implemented in something like proxy servers, because that's a great place to store that information. It's the middleman on the network. You're making the request to the internet, but the proxy is in the middle. The proxy receives that request, and it makes the request for you. So that's a perfect place to have all of your cached information, since it can be evaluated right there before it ever goes out to the internet. One thing that becomes a challenge to cache, however, is information that is constantly updated. Today's web pages are very dynamic in the information that they're providing. You're getting real-time updates of information on what used to be static web pages. And of course, streaming media becomes even more difficult to cache, mainly because there's so much data available that you would have to store somewhere. So these caches are not for all types of traffic. But if you have a certain application that can really benefit from a cached bit of data that would increase the throughput and the performance for everybody, then that might be a good solution for you. One way to implement this is with an open source product called Squid. You can find it at squid-cache.org. The Squid application is one that acts as a proxy, and you can also configure it with many caching options. This diagram demonstrates how many enterprise environments will implement a proxy on their network. They might have a single proxy server, or they might have multiple proxy servers to be able to scale up and have highly available environments for their users. All of your users are down here on the bottom, and they're accessing information that might be out on the internet somewhere. So that proxy server being right in the middle is your perfect location to cache. After the first user requests a page and gets a response to this page, the proxy server is also storing that in the cache. That way, as your second user comes in, that request never goes out to the internet. All additional requests all happen locally on the network. If you have applications that can take advantage of these caching technologies, you may want to implement a proxy server and start caching some of that information. It's going to greatly increase the response time for the users on your network while simultaneously decreasing the amount of bandwidth you're using on your internet connection.